right, welcome back, folks. Here's a question for the House. Is Joe Biden jeopardizing our national security by letting Japan, Nippon Steel, buy out U.S. Steel? Joining me now is Robert Lighthizer, former U.S. trade rep in the Trump administration, my very dear friend. First of all, uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Uh, I know your answer. I'll just ask it. So should they stop the deal? Now, you have allies, uh, Bob, right? You have um, J.D. Vance agrees with you and a couple of others. Actually, uh, Fetterman from Pennsylvania, Democrat agrees with you. But you would not do the deal. You would recommend against the Nippon takeover of U.S. deal. Let me say, first of all, Merry Christmas to you, Larry, uh, and thank you for having me on. So the first thing I have to do is make a disclaimer. I represented U.S. Steel for decades ah. uh, and most of the rest of the domestic steel industry. So it's important to know that I haven't for seven years, but I did represent them. So let me just say, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a faithful watcher, devoted even watcher of this program. And yesterday I watched you and Art uh, talk <laughs> about this just very briefly, and I thought, this is a little bit like watching two of my favorite people talk about how to feed a unicorn <laughs> because you assume that there's free trade in steel. Let me assure you, there is no free trade in steel. Let me just spend a second on that. The big problem with steel globally, and has been for probably 50 years, is massive excess capacity. There's way too much steel in the world. Mm -hmm. So let me give you a point of reference. When, when, when China joined the WTO in 2000, 2001, they had about 120 million tons of capacity. Now they have about 1.1 billion tons of capacity. They have more excess capacity than all the capacity in the United States and Europe combined. So there is no free trade. People create uh, steel industries because they want them for their own, their own development. They have for years. So the question is, how do you kind of manage that. So the second thing I would say is, let's look at Nippon Steel. Nippon Steel are not a bunch of Boy Scouts. I love Japan, and I've, I've been a big fan of theirs, and I think they're a great ally, uh, particularly in trade matters in China. But Nippon Steel has been a judge to be engaged in unfair trade in the United States for at least the last 30 years. The Commerce Department, the Independent International Trade Commission, the courts have all found them involved in unfair trade. And, and, and let me just ask you a question. Do you think you could put together a bunch of money and go buy Nippon Steel in Japan? There's not a chance in the world. You couldn't buy Bao Steel from China, from, from, from China. Countries don't let this happen. First, is there a national security issue? Of course there's a national security issue. Remember, it wasn't just President Trump who did this 232. Ronald Reagan had a steel program. You remember it well. And that, that program also saved the United States industries and saved tens of thousands of middle-class jobs. They both determined it was, it was important for national security. Basic, and remember but, the first time we brought it up with President... No, no, I uh, agree. I, I sat sorry, around... Right no, no, that's right. Look, I love you. I sat around the table with you during the Reagan years, too. Um, but I just felt... Uh, look, here's, here's what you've taught me. We have to strongly protect our advanced technological crown jewels. And, and we have to protect them from unfair trading practices, especially, but not only, but especially with China. And I agree with that 100%, 100%. Second point, uh, the issue of reciprocity. You and President Trump, we got to have reciprocity. So if one side, you know, if our, uh, the other side's going to come at us with unfair trading practices, we got to do something about it. If we can settle it with lower tariffs, fine. If not, then we're going to have to fight back. I'm okay with that. I just never thought, and I wasn't part of the administration when you did the steel tariffs. Uh, I opposed them because I just didn't think they were very useful. And, Bob, they're not even around. I mean, I know there's an exclusion process, but that we've given up on that for years. These are all our allies. Japan's an ally, Canada's an ally, Germany's an ally. They may not be trading friends all the time, but I felt steel was the wrong place to start. What I'm interested in now, here's what I'm interested in now. The Bidens want to remove some of the China tariffs and put in new China tariffs on um, electric uh, vehicles, EVs, and related. Now, to me, that's the completely wrong approach. I wouldn't let China off the hook on anything. And that's where I think you and I are going to agree. Tell me if I'm wrong. No, no, you're completely right about that. Uh, you, you know, first of all, it matters, just on this last point, one last point, it matters who owns American industry. 
Mm. It matters that we have these jobs. It matters that we have production. And is high tech important? Absolutely. But is basic manufacturing important? For sure. You can't be a great country unless you have great manufacturing. And the way I think about it also, you need these middle class jobs. These are the people that make the communities that make our country great. And Reagan saved the industry in a time of, of real crisis. And, and President Trump did exactly the same thing. And with respect to China, we should be increasing tariffs across the board on China. China is a bad actor. Mm. They're, 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 they're an existential threat to our country. Mm. Yes. We need to be able to be a bigger, stronger, better economy than China. And for sure, we should be raising tariffs on yes. them now. And I'm confident we will do that in a new administration. Well, I think you're right, by the way. One thing, uh, reading your book and, and your articles, trade policies have to have, um, you know, economic impact on the middle class and the lower income classes. I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. I don't think, I don't want to get caught up with U.S. deal. I don't think they're a big factor. But I think your bigger point is correct. And also, um, you know, unfair trading practices and reciprocity are huge issues. And I think if President Trump has another uh, term, he's going to rightfully go after that. Um, actually, I hope you go after it with him. How about that? <laughs> well, that's that? that's something we'll see down the road. But uh, but I'll tell you this: he's he's got his eye on the ball, his, and yeah. the ball is China, and that 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 yeah. existential threat and jobs, jobs, jobs. You're right. You're 100 percent right. I gotta go. Uh, never enough time. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, Bob Lighthizer. We, listen, if all we disagreed with was a little puny U.S. deal, deal, what the heck? That's got to be progress. <laughs> I will talk soon.